Hey everyone, how's it going? So last time we played around with these, uh, the bootstrap grid system, and we're now uh, responsively uh, changing the widths of the columns just by specifying the correct classes. We haven't actually had to write any custom CSS yet, we've used all the built-in bootstrap uh, classes that we have. So what we're going to do now is, I'm going to take this a bit further, um, what we're going to do first is add our own CSS page to this, and I'm going to give each one of these columns a little bit of colour just so it's easier to visualise what's going on with the display. So we'll need to create our own CSS file anyway at some point, so we may as well do that now. So what I'll do is I'll go to the folder where my other CSS file is, this login.css one, and I'll create a new file in there by right-clicking on it and selecting new file, and this will be called main.css. Okay, so here's our CSS file, great, but in order to use it, we need to link to it. So in the main layout uh, page, underneath the bootstrap CSS file, I'm going to add a new line and I'll type in uh, link colon CSS and then press enter and then that will fill in all the rest for me. If your text editor doesn't fill that in for you when you press enter, just write this out manually, that's fine too. Um, and then we're going to change the uh, link to main.css and uh, actually this won't work yet, we need to actually specify slash uh, uh, CSS slash main.css, okay? So this is the path. And uh, if I refresh, actually let's add a little bit of style first before we refresh the page. Um, I'm going to say nav and then add a background color. Background color is going to be, I don't know, red. And then underneath that I'll also add the, what was the middle div called? Uh, it had the class main section container. So I'll copy that and then I'll also add some style to that too. And I'll just say background color it's going to be blue like I said we'll change these colors shortly it's just so we can uh, actually see something now we didn't give the uh, last div a class other than col2 so um, I'm not going to style that we could style it as the div that doesn't have the class main section container but as long as it's different from the other two you'll still be able to see what's going on so it doesn't matter um, this is going to look awful <laughs> But that's okay, it's just to test with. If you can't see your changes, uh, open up the inspector by going to inspect. So right click, press inspect, or press F12, which will open up these developer tools. And then go to the console tab, and you might see an error here saying that it can't find the CSS file or something. Uh, any issues, just let me know. Alright, so what do we want to do with this now? Well, we don't want the navbar taking up all this space. At the moment, we have it set up so that once it gets to a certain width, I think it's medium and below. Um, the middle one takes up most of the space, whereas the nav bar takes up two, I think. Uh, I think this one was like eight, then two for each of these columns, the two either side. Um, and then when you get a bit bigger, we just said that these two will take up equal widths, and then the third will take up two, I think it was as well. But anyway, we don't want the nav bar to get this big, obviously. What, there's no need for a nav bar to be that large. So what we're going to do is keep the nav bar at two. I think two is appropriate all the time for us. So if I go to main layout, we can get rid of this other class on the nav element and just keep col2. Now this means it will keep uh, 2 as the width at any point. So no matter what the size is, it will always have 2 as the width. Now I'll get rid of this medium class right here because um, this is always taking up 2 now so uh, it wouldn't make sense for it to be 5 because it wouldn't add up to 12. But um, as we have it now, these uh, these two either side will always take up two, and this middle one would take up eight, which adds up to twelve. So if I refresh the page, you'll see it's always, no matter what the size is, uh, being like this. Okay. So when the screen gets small enough, it would be great if we could get rid of this third column. We don't really want to keep this here, um, especially on like mobile devices when the screen is super small like this. We're going to get rid of this. So we want to hide this third column when the screen gets uh, to a certain size. Now we can do that by using the display classes. If I go back to here, on this uh, third column, I'm going to give it the class .d-none. Now what this is going to do, if I just show you, if I refresh the page, you won't see this anymore. Uh, you'll see it's gone now. So it's always hidden uh, because d-none means display none. So uh, Bootstrap 4 has these handy ways of setting display, uh, setting the display CSS property. You can say D none and it will set it as display none. You can say D block and it will set it as display block. You can do all the others like flex, or display inline, just by saying D dash and whatever the display property is. Um, so by specifying D none, it means it will always have display none. 
So that's not really what we want, is it? We only want to hide it when uh, it gets to a certain size. When it gets big enough, we don't want it to have display none. So what we can do instead, oh, and it's worth pointing out, although there's still the gap there, the element is not there. It's just because <laughs> since we uh, got rid of this, we haven't increased the width of these. We should have made these a bit bigger, so it adds up to 12. So it's just, that's just empty space right there. Um, anyway, so what we want to do then is just specify um, on this same element, we'll say dot um, d dash md dash block, like this. And this means that on uh, medium sizes and above, it will be display block, which is not display none, it's display block. That means that it will be visible. So essentially, medium sizes upwards, it will have display block, which makes it visible. But under medium size, it will have display none, which means it's not visible. So now that we know that this will only be visible on screens uh, of medium and above, we can change the sizes of these for less than medium to, to not have to accommodate this third column. So these guys we know have more width to play with when they're on sizes medium and below, or sorry, below medium. Now, I said we're going to keep the nav as always staying as 2, so that's fine. We can leave this as col 2. We're always keeping that as two. I think that's a good width for it. Um, but the main section will have uh, more width available to it once this is hidden. So what we're actually going to do is change this to uh, col-10. And then we're also going to add uh, col-md-8. And what this means is uh, up until it gets to medium, it will have a width of 10. Uh, because we know that up until medium, this is not visible, so we don't have to accommodate for that width. But once it gets to a medium size, it shrinks down a little bit to 8, because we know that this thing will take up uh, 2. And in fact, we actually need to set this to uh, col-md-2. So let's give that a try. I'm going to refresh the page. Uh, and you can see, if I make it big enough, it's visible. But if I go small enough, it should disappear. So you can see it's disappeared now. Uh, and even on small ones, it's disappeared. So if I make it bigger, you can see it starts coming into play. When we're super wide, it's there. Um, and as I get smaller, it's going to disappear. So if we're on a mobile phone or something, the third one is not there. And this is kind of the same thing that uh, Twitter does as well. Um, Twitter has a third column where it displays some uh, extra information, but information that's not quite essential for the user. Maybe some like nice news updates or hashtags or something. Whereas um, the nav bar and the main section are always available to the user, no matter what the screen size is, because this has the you know the essential uh, information. Okay. Now, if you wanted to, you could take this a step further, and you could make it so that when the uh, uh, when the screen gets to a certain size, the nav bar uh, gets a bit bigger. Maybe you want to do some extra, um, well, extra details there. But for our situation, I'm just going to keep it as two. I think that this is still plenty big enough for a nav bar, uh, even when you get down to like here. I think it's a good size. So as as long as we have enough space in the main section, I think we're okay. So it's a really simple way of making a responsive layout uh, that adapts to all screen sizes without having to actually write any CSS code. I mean, I know we wrote the code to add the background colors, but we didn't have to do that. That's just so we could see it a bit easier. But uh, essentially, we've got this nice layout that responds to the screen size, and we haven't written any CSS code for it.